Hello. How are you? Thanks for joining me. My name is Paula McGurdy and I am a visual artist. And I recently started these creative conversations with other female creatives within Ireland, really to find out a bit more about their process, why they do what they do, how they do what they do, and also really just to champion each other on, champion them on and give space to other artists as well within this industry, sure, why not? Um, today I'm speaking to Jane Fogarty and Jane is a visual artist working out of Dublin and Jane works predominantly with egg tempera and she does um, gorgeous paintings and um, she also makes sculptural objects um, which are very fascinating to see and quite almost like you want to touch them they seem quite tactile um, and we had a lovely conversation. Jane is a really interesting person to chat to and her work is really going from strength to strength and I think you'll really enjoy this episode, so enjoy. Hi Jane. Hey Paula, how are you? How are you doing? Welcome you. and thanks for joining me. No, thanks so much for having me. I'm delighted. Yeah. It's really great, it's really exciting. Thanks a million. Um, nice to have, have a creative chat uh, yeah. at the end of the the lockdown period it's good to I know it's mad isn't it it's kind of coming yeah. to the end it feels yeah. like hmm, yeah things are shifting yeah. a bit which which is great yeah, it is really yeah. Good. yeah. Good. so good. how are you doing how's the how's the artwork been going have you been able to make much in this time has it kind of led you into making more or has this been a time of just slowing down or definitely not made me make more work yeah <laughs> it has it definitely slowed me down so um i didn't have access to my studio during lockdown okay yeah and i live in a very very small apartment in rat mines and it just it was just unworkable and i i think that's okay i was um at the beginning, I was like, I'll kind of geared up and I'll do loads of things and I'll just, I'll work smaller and I'll adapt. And, and mm. I don't know, with everything that was going on and the terrifying news and the stress of the whole situation, I just, I, mm. my head wasn't there. And I think creating for me is something that I need to be in a flow and I need to be in a headspace to, to allow it to happen. Um, and I think that's that's something that took me a long time to accept as an artist that there's kind of um, a cycles to to how I work, and that I might have really productive, really busy periods that might last for a year, a year and a half, and then that slows a little bit, and suddenly I would focus more on researching and applications and exhibitions and kind of disseminating the work then. So. Mm -hmm. I, I've I've kind of learned to forgive myself for periods of yeah. of slower productivity, um, because I think when you when I first left college, I was like, you have to make work every day, and I have you have to be extremely productive, but it, that can even that can dilute the work. And what I was finding is I was getting completely in my head then, and and almost this paralysis for work, and it was mm -hmm. I can't. Um, yeah, it became an obstacle rather than a, mm. an encouraging thing. So if I just accept there's a pace that things go at, uh, yeah. that, that's that's kind of how I've learned to work in the past mm. number of years. I always really think there's like an ebb and flow, isn't there, to to well, so can. many artists? Like, and and I think each artist works very differently in how that, but it also comes in yeah. seasons with life and how your life is actually flowing. And exactly, exactly, and it is. It, Thing of kind of letting go and and as you said like having no guilt over that because I just don't think you can output output the whole time I mean you can but it's not always going to be your yeah. best work then yeah. at the same time exactly. you know so. and, and why are you doing it then like what's your motivation yeah. in, in making that work and yeah. um is it just to say I made some work you know yeah. it's, I, I prefer to do it when I feel it and luckily yeah. that happens quite regularly uh, yeah but, but when it doesn't, that's that's Brilliant. okay. There's other ways to yeah. spend your time and gear up for the next bout yeah. of productivity. Yeah. Um, but I think I also think every artist is different, and that everyone will find their 
their rhythm. Um, mm. And there's some, I don't know, sometimes you're looking at Instagram, I don't know if you find it, oh, there's like yeah. some artists that are just prolific, like just constantly creating. And that's amazing. I, I love yeah. that. And I love seeing that. Um, but I had to just say, no, that's not you, Jen. That's okay. <laughs> I know. And you get into the comparison game then. And I yeah. just think that's actually never really helpful because that's always about fear and lack of rather than seeing yourself as an artist exactly. who is abundant in their own creativity and you just exactly. work in very different ways. Yeah. Exactly. I know. Like social media is brilliant, but it's also really bad. <laughs> I know that as well. Yeah. You know? I was like, oh, God, I'm going to just switch off for a few days now. Or, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Take it all yeah. with a little pinch of salt as well. Yeah, <laughs> this is it, yeah. yeah. Um, so how did you get into the flow of it all? How did this creativity, was it always there? Did you, like, where were the first beginnings of it for you? Did you feel yeah. like it was from early on? And Yeah, I, I would say most definitely it's been a oh. thing that's I've I've had since childhood it's just yeah. I, think, I don't know I've definitely had conversations with people before of, and saying like I, I could never do anything else there was nothing mm. I mean I could I could get another job <laughs> but there's yeah. nothing nothing else I want to do as much as yeah. I love doing this and I was very lucky I grew up in a very creative household mm. and it was encouraged um mm. My mother would always kind of encourage us to make and to create. And I've two brothers who ended up uh, getting into music and okay, both yeah. very creative in their own way. So it's kind of, it's been there. And then uh, I kind of, I don't know, I've, my dad would be a very, very hard working man. And I think that discipline I then applied to my creative process as well, or try to apply. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I think having supportive parents from an early age that kind of told us to do what makes you happy and pursue your passion and your like your drive. That without that philosophy, I don't think I could have done it. Mm. Um, and then school was very supportive. I had a wonderful art teacher in secondary school, um, and I just I knew that I wanted to go to art college and I wanted to try that. And then I was there and I was like, I love this. I really yeah. love this. And I don't know, when you go to art college, there, there's different, people take it up differently because I guess it's not exactly what you have in mind. It's definitely not what I had in mind. Um, you know, I had images of us just drawing all the time, or but it, it challenges you and it like expands your mind and and I and I loved it. And I left college, and I still wanted to do it. And I had this kind of fire in my belly of I I want yeah. to do this, and I want to make it work. And it hasn't always been easy. And that makes it sound like this wonderful epic journey where everything just works out, and you have a studio. But uh, it's, it it poses its challenges. But uh, I'm I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't do anything else. Yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? Some people come out of our college and they just continue to embrace it. And other people, I guess, they just burn after it. You know, it depends. It people takes a lot. Think. I feel like it takes a lot out of people Definitely. kind of more emotionally. And uh, it's such a challenge on that on that level, you know. So Definitely. And people yeah. realize that, uh, this isn't for me and I, and I don't want to be an artist. And that's, yeah. that's great. And, and they'll end up in a creative job whatever their industry is yeah. they'll apply those skills yeah. um yeah but I, I kind of was surprised at the the small number of people that when you yeah, graduate continue on. Want to yeah. well, it's, it wasn't a wasn't a huge amount so mm. um but, so you did print making then is that is that right Jane I you did I went to to the the name of the school was the uh DIT it was fine art the school of art design and printmaking which okay is, yeah but it was a very broad mm -hmm. just fine art so uh, as opposed yeah. to other colleges where you would specialize in a discipline um in DIT we kind of did everything we sampled everything and then as the years progress you kind of start to focus a little bit more in on your area of interest and I think at that point I was I mean, I did some printmaking in around third year that I, I felt like oh, there's something here that I enjoy, but 
painting always kind of pulled me back and I kept mm. on referring to painting, but painting in a more kind of expanded field, I suppose, is what I was thinking about at the time. And I played around with kind of installation and my degree show was um, a large installation which kind of encompassed the whole room of kind of thinking about the idea of time and how that's embedded in uh, in a painting or in, in a piece of art. So I, mm. I timed myself uh, to paint for one minute on a piece of cardboard and I mixed up new colours every time. And I made 1,440 uh, paintings that were for one minute. Mm. And it was uh, 24 hours. What would, what would 24 hours like visually look like? So this turned into this large installation. So it was always painting, but painting yeah. with um, thinking about materiality and thinking about um, process and kind of looking at what's in front of you, what, what's, what's exactly is here. So time and gesture and someone's engaging with these materials. So those, those ideas were quite interesting to me at the time. Mm. And that pushed me then on graduation into, I start working three-dimensionally, which I didn't really do much in college. Mm. And I think often people associate me as being a sculptor. And I, <laughs> I think of myself, <laughs> um, which, I, I mean, they're kind of silly notions. It doesn't really matter what category you fit into. Yeah. Um, but always painting is at the root. And that just yeah. led me to make sculptural things that were always very layered and quite colorful and uh, mm. so yeah I because I love here the I don't know what you do you call them sculpture sculptural mm -hmm. forms or, or objects or yeah. like how would you like is I that what I you would, would call them yeah Thank I love them because I, I'm you. fascinated I want to know one what they're made of but that's the artist in yeah. me and like how, like how do you make do, do you layer them do you make them all at the same time um, so they're the the more recent sculptures I've, I've in maybe in the past oh god actually I've been making them for a few years now time flies okay. uh, maybe in the past five years or so I've been playing with uh, paper pulp so it's they're okay. all made from paper and I was interested what led me to making them was I was interested in how color and form could kind of be uh, continuous uh, within mm. the object so it wasn't mm. that sort of color was applied to the surface that it, the yeah. object was the color so i was i'd get like gather loads of recycled paper pick it up from outside offices you know those big bags <laughs> <laughs> uh, carry it on your back <laughs> <laughs> um so then i i make a big bath of uh put them in loads of water and and mix yeah. them into the and the color comes from uh, crap paper so okay all paper and some wallpaper paste mm -hmm. and then I squeeze them through either mesh or fabric and they kind of what was important to me in that was that the, there's kind of the action that you can tell that this is a person interacting with a mm -hmm. material that it's uh, there's some kind of human touch involved mm -hmm. um, and then I start to layer them so um with the work, I try and not have anything that's too hidden. So there's no armature kind of internal support for the sculptures. They just kind of, I layer up the paper. And paper is amazingly versatile as a material. Mm. Um, get, I'm, like, I'm getting real enthusiastic now. Talking about <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, art nerdy i love all that kind of stuff you know <laughs> uh, it, it flies like a rock like it, it really so yeah hard. have you ever pulled well, it's very uh, light i'd say is it though you know when they dry they're really yeah. light, but actually yeah the making of them it's quite challenging because they're really heavy because when the paper is wet they're just like really heavy so you have to okay. there's a lot of playing with gravity and balance and yeah. uh, sometimes lumps just fall off and <laughs> readjust. but by the time they're dry they are actually quite light but you know yeah. it actually feels like if you've ever put a tissue in your pocket and then put your trousers in the wash yes and it's, like, yeah. and it's like this little hard condensed um little dot of paper whatever yeah. it's, so it's kind of like that only i'm manipulating the form a little bit 
Okay. Um, I mean, paper is amazing. You can cast with it and everything. Uh, it's it's fantastic. I, yeah, I tried to use it just kind of in a more organic looking form. Mm -hmm. And then uh, layer them up and thinking about uh, color and composition as I do that. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's where the painterly approach comes in at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and thinking about like how your eye might be led around. So how do you place color in various places? And, mm -hmm. um, and then I suppose when I'm finished, I feel like they're kind of a painting that's been pulled uh, vertically into three-dimensional space in a way that you can mm. see all the layering um, and the gestures and the, the kind of figuring out composition and things. Mm. Um, and then when you look at them, sorry, Jane, when you look at them, cool. some of them could all, almost be like an like a brush stroke in itself, like an yeah. all, like the way that they're formed and shaped. You know, they're yeah. yeah I, I was just, thinking like that. It was yeah kind of picking apart the elements of, of painting yeah. and uh, still very close to things that I've been thinking about since graduating and st since my work uh, as a student. It's yeah. it's kind of just, it's spurring on and, and developing. Um, and then from them, I kind of derive a, a color palette. So I'd photograph the sculptures and get a little color swatch from like the most prominent colors in the in the work and from them I would create uh, a painting that kind of corresponds mm. to the sculpture so uh, the ones that you see on the wall behind me yeah. uh, would be part of that process and I start okay. I started in gosh was it maybe 2017 I think I start playing 2018 well uh, I play, start playing mm -hmm. around with egg tempera painting um, and yeah. So I've would never make, used egg temper actually, but I can well, imagine yeah. it's quite like gouache, is it? Or it is quite like, yeah, quite like gouache. Um, and yeah. so, what I really enjoyed about it, I I just love mixing colors. I love mixing paint. <laughs> I love ages, just mixing the paint in my studios and like getting the color really exactly corresponding with the, the color swatch from the, the sculptures and. Um, so there's something really nice about that process for me of kind of slowing down and mm. focusing on this uh, this one activity in front of you. Um, mm. So then I then I create a a, a series of, of paintings that kind of uh, kind of correspond with the the sculptural works. That's mm. I suppose in a nutshell my process. Which are your gorgeous paintings behind you there, Jane? Is that right? Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so there, because when I originally saw them, I there's some marks on them, mm -hmm. and again, this is like the artists, you know, when you look yeah. at a painting, you're like, God, I wonder how they did that. Yeah. And initially, I saw it, and I like because there's some quite fine detail. And at first, I thought, is that marker? Because some of the some of okay. the bits on it, I thought, kind of looked like he used a marker. But obviously, I wasn't really like up close and personal to it. I, know, then, I know the gestures you're referring to, actually. Um, yeah. Because it's kind of, with tempera, you you layer up the, the paint in glazes, and um, they, be, they become opaque. But yeah. as you, like, but as you, begin to apply the paint, you can definitely uh, highlight the gesture and the brush stroke. So mm. I would kind of leave various elements within the composition of uh, more dense, uh, opaque color and mm. more gestural works. And I try and approach the painting where you can kind of see all of the layers at some point within the composition. Mm. So you can see the history of the painting and the decision making process as you kind of dig down through the layers that there's always a little key or some point, a little window into the the previous mark mm. because they're not predetermined. They're not, um, I don't make a plan for the painting. They're kind of responsible. Okay. Uh, as, do as you do any sketchbook work or anything like that then? Really? Okay. I always yeah, have like sketchbooks. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate and I just I don't hate them but I just I they don't they don't that's not part of my process see I'll tell you yeah. the closest thing when I actually have it to hand the closest thing I have to a sketchbook is I keep a like a note of all of my colors 
So as I mix the colors, I I have a reference. Um, I love it, yeah. Them, but that's it's not preparatory, I suppose, in the sense of like make a plan. I mean, I have notebooks where I scribble down ideas and and I use them more for if I'm reading and uh, I, if something grabs me, I might make a note. So in that sense, I would know. Yeah. But, uh, and do you do like, so you're obviously mad into the color mixing stuff. Would you make a note of quantities and stuff like that, which I'm always fascinated by, but I don't do because <laughs> I just, <laughs> no, lazy, I, I, guess. <laughs> um, I feel I'm quite intuitive with color mixing. Yeah. I kind of I know what I'm doing. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm quite good at mixing quite exact matches of tones and, and colors and um i would make notes i mean when i was familiarizing myself with the tempera i would definitely have to there's a little bit of a chemistry to it and in the consistency of the egg and ratios mm -hmm. of water and vinegar and things so um in that sense i like because that's quite an exact science and it wasn't yeah. as important for me at the beginning um i feel like i've gotten I've gotten a feel for it at this stage. And now I, know, I also know that there's very kind of strict rules sometimes with egg tempera that I might be bending a little bit, that I, mm. I don't know, sometimes would apply a few layers and then scratch into the tempera, which by the, the standard or the rule book of egg tempera painting, yeah, that's I'm a bit- I'm for breaking rules, you know? <laughs> I'm such a rogue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so how did you get into egg tempera then have you tried i mean obviously you tried other mediums and stuff what was it about that like that you thought <clears throat> this is this is yeah kind of you landed with that you know i for years it's always been water-based paints for me mm. uh, that have attracted me and i i, I wasn't I, I felt it was a bit a, acrylic for me didn't sit where I, I wanted it uh, so for years mm. I was painting with, with watercolor um oils never worked they, I'm just not even going to talk about them that just wasn't <laughs> <laughs> didn't do it I, mm. uh, I, I just never it was it was a problem with the opacity I like I just couldn't I, I liked working in, in glazes and, and kind of uh, layering up uh, and as I say, she, like being able to see the process within the painting, that was quite important. Mm -hmm. So that was, it was watercolor for years. And even times when I was predominantly showing uh, or exhibiting sculpture, sculptural work, I was always making kind of watercolors in tandem with that. I just wasn't showing them so much. And then um, I'm not, I'm not sure the exact moment where, where I, when I mm -hmm. thought of, I must try this temper but um mm. there was something about the ability to still have transparencies and still have glazes and then layer up this kind of quite opaque um and the richness of the color and it also has this really beautiful kind of satin finish um mm. and that's a, a kind of a decision in in the framing of the work at the end I, I haven't been putting glass in front of them because I just love the finish of the paint so much um mm. I feel I, I don't know I think a glass I think glass would kind of obscure that but mm -hmm. um yeah I I can't I can't remember the exact moment of god I must give mm. that a try but I went um I think it was 2018 I went to Kilrillig you know down in uh, in Kerry they mm -hmm. have like a, a residency yeah. so I had this two-week period of just dedicating myself to figuring out this medium and playing around with it and that was a real kind of important development in in my painting work and it gave me a confidence to begin exhibiting the paintings as well I felt mm -hmm. I'd kind of hit on something at that point um, I'm trying to think of what else it was about the 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 temper that there was um i think it was as well the the kind of getting to the root because like remember i was saying like a lot of my interest is in what is it that you you see when you when you're confronted with a painting and this allowed me to kind of go back to the beginning of well what even is the paint you know what what are we talking about here so it's 
selection of pigments and some some fat as a binder, something to hold them together. So it allowed me to kind of access the work from a very kind of early point in its mm. uh, origin, I suppose. And that just, mm. it just interested me in a uh, kind of materiality kind of sense. Um, mm. I also actually, I tell you now, I'm after remembering what the, what the, I knew there was something that kind of spurred me on to, to mm. play with the temper. And this is just a purely practical thing. I had loads of pigment in the studio. <laughs> I was like, what am I do with them? They're just sitting there. Why don't I make my own paint? And keeping it water-based, that was it. That was the decision. So yeah. very, um, not a very inspiring or eureka moment. It was kind of that's, yeah. born. Sometimes the practicalities are what, yeah, yeah. that's exactly it. It's what yeah. it lets us into it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really happy that that happened. I, I, I feel... Yeah. It, it works for me and it kind of achieves what I want to achieve between mm. that so, tension between real depth of color and then real translucent. Yeah. yeah. Mm, gorgeous. And do you work on a bigger scale than that then, Jane? Um, yeah. Like how I, big would the pieces be? Then? This one here, that's a work in progress. Mm. That was, that's kind of been the largest I've gone to date because I like to work uh, flat. I always stretch the paper yeah. first, and mm. so so they're on boards because I like to be able to like flatten them on the floor or put them on the desk so that I'm not getting lots of drips. Um, drips yeah. So just by kind of that's about as big a board as I can find at the moment. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. That size. Now I have bought a roll of uh, very nice paper. So I, I, my intention is definitely to scale up, and mm. um, but I, I have to figure out the stretching of the paper and whatever. I know because the mm. ripple, isn't it? The rippling, and you know yeah. that's the big issue, isn't it? Yeah. Which, you, with the temporary, you want to have a kind of a hard surface to work on because if you layer the, mm. if you put it on quite thickly, the paint can crack. Um, if it's on like a, a softer surface, um. Mm. I haven't had that issue yet, but I, I'm just kind of aware that that's something that can happen. Yeah. Um, so I, I would definitely love to scale up, and I and I found I found it quite difficult because I was used to working like the paintings that you see on the wall um, yeah. are a real familiar scale for me, and real. Yeah. I'm comfortable. Um, yeah. And it wasn't until that residency in Kilrillig that I decided I'm going to try and scale up a little bit here and I mm. it's really difficult um, <laughs> yeah. in a challenging way in a way that I kind of got a little kick out of it like negotiating this new new space and um mm. because the gesture becomes totally totally different um depending on the scale and mm. um you've yeah it, it's just it's, it's just a different a different negotiation mm. um so it would be I'm starting to become more comfortable with this scale again. So to mm. kind of push myself a little bit now, I I would love to go. Yeah, and I guess the bigger you go as well, the more you're using more of your physicality within the Absolutely. painting as well. Whereas when it's on a smaller scale, it's really just more you know the hand and arm kind of gesture. Whereas yeah. the larger it gets, you you become yeah. more involved, I guess, with it, don't you? You know, um, traditionally, uh, tempera would be applied in quite small tight gestures and mm. cross hatching kind of layered up um gestures but it's that's kind of interesting for me then as well to like try and so how do i use this medium that's traditionally very small gestures and very tight mm. uh how do i loosen that up a little bit and i think definitely as you say like the scale allows you to do that like it allows you to to put your body into it a bit more yeah yeah, yeah. So maybe mm. come back to me in a year or so, and I'm like, and that'd be huge, huge <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, do you have any kind of ritual when you begin working, or what? What would a day look like for you? I mean, by ritual, I don't, I don't mean like yeah. you know, I I don't know what I mean actually, but you know, do you do you have a mantra? Do you have your cup of coffee? How does your um, day get in? God, it's uh, no, no is the answer because 
um, I think my life, well, definitely pre-lockdown was quite, um, to support my, this is going to go off on a little tangent, to, to support my work, I work in education. So I was doing lots of, uh, before lockdown, obviously, uh, workshops yeah. and g traveling to different galleries and different museums and um, facilitating workshops. And they can happen at any time of the day. So there was no, there was never any real structure to my week. Um, that's mm -hmm. changed slightly. Um, but so it was very difficult for me to say, okay, Monday to Friday, uh, gonna be in the studio nine to eight or whatever. It, that yeah. would never happen. So it was always um, use the days off that I have and ritual. No, there was no ritual. There was no. uh, oh, actually, you know the only thing that I sometimes find myself doing that I think actually might be part of yeah. my process: sweeping <laughs> <Even> the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make sure that there's not loads of clutter around me before I start. Yeah. Give the floor a little That's sweet. a ritual, yeah. Then... yeah. You need to video that now, Jane. But the video, that's part of your next installation. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Give the floor a little sweet. So I don't know if that's like a procrastination or like an ease myself yeah. into the studio day. Uh, yeah. Is my only yeah. <laughs> uh, not very sleeping. <laughs> yeah. And actually, I think I know a few artists that might might have a similar kind of. I'll do. I'll clean up a little bit first, and then I'll start. Yeah. It seems to be yeah a common approach. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, can't work in clutter. Definitely not. Yeah. 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 A lot of clutter it, over there, but you know. But it's different when it's your own kind of. Yeah organized clutter that's i think that's yes, a different yeah. uh, headspace yeah. and i try i suppose i try and keep uh some sculptural work and some painting happening at the same time uh because mm. the the drying times with the sculptures are quite slow so then there'll be a period of time where i would switch to painting uh for mm. some hours now the Painting process is qu is quite protracted, so it takes a long time to make the paint and mix the colors. And as, as I say, it's mm. errors mixing colors. Um, and that's often a kind of a meditative step into the painting process as well for me. Mm. Um, mm. So it, it kind of depends on the day. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and deadlines about... deadline kind of impose different oh, ways as yeah. well sometimes, I think. Yeah, yeah. then I think oh, you work in no a very different... Hmm. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's good in many ways. I mean, I think, well, I guess it depends on the artist as well, doesn't it? You know, yeah. but many artists don't. There's no nine to five or nine to whatever or yeah. Monday to Friday. I think a constant yeah. process of... Definitely. working whether you're putting stuff to paper or making something i think yeah. it's it's a constant going on in your mind of the process of it all and absolutely yeah. and i think there's a couple of factors that might dictate that like as you, were, you mm. mentioned earlier on like where you are in your life and what other external yeah. factors are kind of impacting on your process and that balance between organizing yourself and securing funding and securing exhibitions like that's part mm. of the, the role or the job of being an artist whether you enjoy mm. it or not it's it's a necessary yeah. um it's a necessary part to enable you to continue doing what you do so mm. to try and achieve a balance between the two i think is yeah um another important it's just an important mm. factor to, to grapple with yeah, definitely. And um, one of the questions that I guess I would get asked or I hear kind of quite a lot will be mm -hmm. um, people starting out, I guess, in the process mm -hmm. about finding their um, their own style. Mm -hmm. And I guess I wonder, how did you come to your own kind of style of work? And mm -hmm. would you have any words for somebody who is just out, starting out on that? Yeah. Um, I 
I never, I suppose I never attempted to have a style. I never attempted mm. to make work that looks like this or, yeah. but I, what I did do was read lots of it artists, but this was through art college where you're in that environment yeah. where you're made to kind of expand your knowledge of what's, what's happened already and where's mm. art right now. And so just exposing myself to loads of, uh, different artists and different ways of working and I think naturally I found myself constantly gravitating towards painting and mm -hmm. that and then it was well what about painting so as you know there is a, a vast uh, many ways of approaching painting but it, for me mm -hmm. it was about okay well what is it that interests me and what interested me was um, colour and thinking about the act of painting and um, what are artists doing when they make a painting. So mm. for me, I was less interested in creating this illusionary space um, that I was interested in like, what's really in front of you and, and encouraging people to slow down and like, just, just look at what's in front of you and take that in mm. um, and try and understand that. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar of the work of Robert Ryman, but um he's an american painter and he paints these quite abstract well actually i shouldn't use that word now it's going to go against what i say he paints these uh white on white paintings um and he spoke about them not in terms of abstraction and he didn't look at them as abstract he looked at them as pieces of realism because it's because mm. it's really a tangible object that's in front of you and when i heard that that kind of changed everything for me that uh was a light bulb moment and um so so it was through looking at other artists and thinking about how they uh approach the work and aligning things that suit like fit with me to okay well mm. this has happened and that makes sense to me but that doesn't make sense to me so where do I fit in all of that that was uh how I developed my if a style if you want to call it a style but my approach to making mm. uh making paintings and making work in general mm. to advise anyone in that process um i'm not sure i yeah because you want to feel like the work that you make is authentic to yourself i would say avoid mm emulating another artist just for the sake of it because you think that looks cool but finding what you want to to f say and what you what kind of speaks to you and i think mm. it kind of comes naturally after that when you when you're able to position yourself and what kind of aligns with your thinking that that things kind of fall into place that's kind of vague mm. as an answer i'm sorry <laughs> no not at all that's I think that's excellent what about inspiration do you look to other artists for inspiration I know you don't necessarily want to emulate what other artists do but sure. do you find yourself looking to other artists for that or where would you look for your own inspiration is that something that comes easy um I think oh it's such a tricky word inspiration um like for me bodies of work often kind of um progress from previous bodies of work so the work mm. kind of organically grows so i'm trying not to um have too many external factors come in on the work now i know that's a kind of a paradox because i don't make work in a bubble and of course things are going to indirectly seep into the work um, mm. and i look at so many artists and i and i love uh, I love looking at other artists, but I, I try not to directly take inspiration. I don't know. I'm actually, I find that a difficult question. Yeah. Uh, because I think things might indirectly seep in. I think that's natural for any artist. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, there's there's plenty of artists. And actually, maybe where I take inspiration from other artists is how they talk about and how they contextualize their work. Um, mm. I think that's often really enlightening for me. Mm. Um, but in terms of their output, I, I can't say I would directly be inspired. Mm. Um, 
Yeah. What about uh, challenges that you would face as an artist? Do you, mm -hmm. Is there anything in particular that you think, yeah, that's oh, something so that you veer away it's from? <laughs> <laughs> um, but as much as any any job has their, or vocation has their, their challenges, um, yeah. the main one, the main one is definitely sustaining a practice. When, mm. for me, the work, and they, like when I left college, it was never commercially driven. It was about I wanted to make these things and how do I make this happen? So finding ways to uh, secure funding. and But funding is not always something that's available. Um, mm -hmm. So juggling work and then trying to find the balance between your work life and uh, sustaining a studio practice. And I'd be quite strict on myself mm -hmm. as well of making sure that there's uh, time for family and time for friends. Like I think that's really important. Mm. So, time management is a, is a challenge. Um, yeah. And I think, as I was saying earlier, I've gotten I've gotten better with myself. Of like, you don't mm. have to be producing huge bodies of work every few months or whatever. Like that's okay. So that that was a challenge. Um, and then yeah, sustaining a practice in a a city where there's or even a country where there's constant lots of closures and the arts and culture sector mm. and um funding is really competitive it's their their challenges but um mm. i think i'm really stubborn and persistent so determined I'm, determined, determined. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah so um, that kind yeah. of that sustains it but definitely there's there's times when it's difficult now my partner is also an artist and I think that our that offers like really great support and that we both kind of understand the uh the system and uh the mm -hmm. challenges of, of doing that and can support each other um time wise and uh like take I'll take responsibility for this thing if you need to go to the studio and and that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but um yeah. There, How does that work with the two of you, Jane, then? Yeah. If you're both artists, do you feel like you kind of feed off each other in terms of artistically? Have you ever shown together or yeah. is your work very different? Yeah. Well, early, early in our relationship, we did a collaborative project. I'll never do it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're still together, yeah. <laughs> no, it was like it went really well, and uh, yeah. it was a really interesting concept. And uh, but I think it that was a learning curve in itself. Of I like making work on my own, and it's a nice, it's yeah. almost, it's a an activity, and it's an isolated activity for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, so we share a, a studio and we obviously we live together. So um, yeah, it's it's actually it it works really well. It's quite supportive. Um, our work, I don't think our work has ever kind of you know seeped in or we've ever influenced each other um, yeah. too much. David uses quite. Um, earthy natural colors and he's he works a lot with the landscape in um mm. kind of various ways and, and photography and printmaking and makes very bespoke frames and very kind of i think the one commonality between both of our practices is they're both very process driven um, and very material driven so we've great conversations about that um yeah. and it's it's great i mean in a in a kind of community sense it's also really uh, lovely because I think community is a really important part of being an artist um, in our studios on Talbot Street th there's some great artists here and, and there's kind of a support network through that community and um, we would facilitate kind of curatorial visits together and we would have kind of critique groups together and just kind of general chats and then yeah. at the same time you can shut the door and have your own space and get on with your work yeah. in solitude and but I think I really think community is important uh for, mm. for and when I say I make work in isolation I 
make I physically make the work in isolation, but you, you rely on so many people to bring an exhibition to fruition and to yeah. allow you to even be in this privileged position in the first yeah. place, you know? So it's, um, it's yeah, I think it's important to not lose sight of that community and stay in touch. Mm. And, uh, like we, a lot of our friends are artists and you kind of go to exhibitions together. And so that's all like, it allows it to kind of fit into your life uh, a little bit. Yeah. No. Yeah, and this is your studio. This is your new studio as well, Jane. Is that it yeah. that you're in now? Like new studio uh, space. Same, same studio. Uh, collective, not, it's not a collective uh, studio building, uh, but we yeah. were upstairs, and a uh, nice bright studio came available uh, on the first oh, floor. Nice. And yeah, it's really nice. It's got lovely high ceilings, and uh, we just moved in this week. So great. Uh, Great. It's been it's been disruptive to work and that kind of process, but it's really nice. I feel like we're almost settled in now, and um, yeah, should be great. It's a nice place to come. I think it's important that you you want to go to your studio. That is a it is a an environment that's uh, not. Well, not I guess it has to be a welcoming space that you feel yeah. actually there's somewhere that I do want to be and be immersed Absolutely. in and. Yeah, be creative in otherwise. I remember having this really, really cold, cold, cold. I mean, it was beautiful and bright, but it was so sure. cold. And it's, it's like terrible. having to have a hot water bottle. Oh my God. Two heaters. <laughs> and it it like, kind of doesn't really yeah, make you want to. Working conditions is bananas. Uh, I was talking to yeah. another artist in the studio here the other day, and she was like, Oh, yeah, I filled in this survey recently. And she was like, What? One of the questions was, What is like, um, what are the main things that you would look for in a studio? She's like heating and you know, like yeah. <laughs> we're really not asking much, but sometimes yeah. studios can be just this is lovely and warm and it's lovely and bright and it's uh, all good things. Um, yeah, as you say, you don't want your fingers falling off that you're trying to. Yeah. Paint. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hypothermia and stuff. Hypothermia. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess um part of me wants to really debunk the whole uh, starving artist thing, which yeah. I think uh, is is a story that is is told over and over again. And I know it's hard to make a, a living from art mm -hmm. um in many ways, and I know you really just have to be very determined and mm -hmm. keep on pushing into it but can you tell a little bit more about like kind of the business side for yourself is that something that comes sure. easy for you or um, like where would you get most of your your business I know that you work as well Jane like yeah. as a as a, a facilitator teacher work, workshop yeah 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 I won't go into it. It's a long list of yeah. <laughs> uh, freelancing <laughs> education things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So as I was kind of, as I was saying earlier on, like when I left, definitely my focus was not uh, on commercial commercialization of my work. Um, mm -hmm. But I, but at the same time, I want to say I don't like that there can sometimes be a taboo and certainly leave an art college that there is a taboo from making money from your work i hate that um mm -hmm. but it just because i i think that's really important you want to be able to do what you what you want to do and who's what planet are we living on if we think that uh you don't want to sell your work that's nonsense you know uh, it, and it has to be sustainable really people yeah, otherwise so i think and i think that's why so many people end up not going into it or yeah. don't choose it in the first place because they yeah. think i absolutely I don't make, yeah yeah, yeah you know. at the same time i didn't want um I didn't want to, the, the external things dictating what I made. I didn't want it to turn mm -hmm. into a case of, oh, that was a really successful painting or that was a really successful mm -hmm. sculpture that you made. So reproduce that and and or keep to that aesthetic. Um, I didn't want yeah. that to seep in. I was just making work that I wanted to make. I still am just making work that I want to make. Um, and it's only kind of in recent years that I've had more 
commercial success and I'm still not making a living off of my art um, and that's okay I've I've accepted that like I I actually also love working in art education I love talking about art with people um, so I, I actually feel like for me I found this lovely balance um, mm -hmm. where I can make as I say make the work I want to make that's not dictated externally but I in talking about like running a business or seeing yourself as a business like there's still huge amount of organizational work and administration that's involved in doing it if that's your approach still applications art applications that need to be uh written there's you still need to learn how to present and talk about your work and that took mm. i felt like i didn't understand that in college it was when I left, I was like, actually, you are, you're, you're a business, you are, mm -hmm. um, you need to learn how to market yourself, you need to learn how to talk about your work that's open and accessible to people. Um, Which I think that they do, like, I think in, I don't know about your experience, but I feel like in our college, to speak about your work, for me, I felt mm -hmm. like that was a very, uh, a very acceptable approach, and obviously in group crits and stuff like that, you're, yeah you're encouraged to do that quite a lot but the anything about applying for grants yeah. or crazy nothing like that was it's crazy nothing like that is spoken at our it was kind of in when I was in college where they had a professional practice module and but I think I would have loved if they had have gone through here's an arts council application and we're going to do it you're going to do this from start to finish and you're going to see what's involved yeah. because i didn't have a clue about uh writing a budget and like the financial side of things i didn't feel like i grasped that in college or mm. was introduced mm. uh, i don't want to put my college down i think they did a, they did a great job but like i, I definitely think there was gaps there for me yeah. um and yeah I, I, I that that's like that's probably something I'm I feel like I'm still learning like be how to be really organized with your taxes and how to like mm -hmm. financially plan and, and budget for things and um yeah they're like vital vital tools for being an artist it's yeah. not just lock yeah. yourself in your studio and make all paintings all day actually the admin I mean, side somebody's going to knock on the door and <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly hey, off you. Gonna off you. Yeah. <laughs> no it doesn't work like that um yeah. yeah so and like the amount of time you spend answering emails and doing all the admin side of your work like it's it's huge yeah. huge mm -hmm. and i don't know uh i think the working days of of artists the hours are are long <laughs> but it's i mean doing it because you love it and, as, and i said it at the yeah. beginning i'll say it again i wouldn't change it um mm. but it, it takes a lot of a lot of behind the scenes prepping and organization definitely yeah um, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's a big learning curve, I think, uh, you know, with all of the other things, all of the other elements that need to fit around you actually making in the process of making. There's so yeah. much else, I guess. And I, I still there. feel like there's a huge taboo in certain artistic circles and in, in discussing mm. prices around work and the finances of it. And yeah, and I, and I wish more artists would talk about how they sustain this is why this com these conversations are great. How do you sustain it? Mm. How do you make it happen? Um, mm. Do you do you have another job? Most artists have another mm. job. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's not really spoken about any. No, sure it's not. It's not. Chain, you I know, know. I and because it it's yeah part of the yeah. practicalities of life. Um, it is or yeah. the life of an artist, I suppose. Um, mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. But I, I don't know, I still, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I've got all of the business side of my work down, but um, I think having a website is a huge one as well. And mm. that, like being extremely organized with all of your, your biographies ready to go and your statements and just, just having a good, uh, mm 
good system. Do you find it easy to uh, write about yourself? I mean, you're obviously very good at about talking about your work. Do you find putting like words on paper is that something that comes easy to you, like um, artist statements and bios and all that kind of stuff? I don't. Lo I don't love it. Uh, mm. And it took a. It's, it just takes years and years of just doing it. Uh, mm. Just keep keep practicing, keep changing it, adjust your artist statement yeah. regularly, um, yeah. tweak it, adjust it to whichever specific funding you're going for um mm. it, it it just it takes co it's constant work it's constant work i don't mm. know I, I and mm. i find um I, I guess like intellectualizing what i do i, I just find it really yeah. really difficult um I do too. It's, it's almost. It's, I feel like for me, it's another language that I, yeah. I don't feel comes naturally to me as yeah. a person when I, you know, when I speak. So it's something that I find definitely as a challenge. But I know other artists actually thrive in that kind of in that. Oh, some artists but... are just like poets. <laughs> just, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I am that. Yeah. I am that. Yeah, I do. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, I, and I think that's something I need to work on a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I've always been quite interested in, in writing, and I can, and I, I can construct a sentence, and I can. What yeah. <laughs> right? It's the oh, I don't know. I do, I do struggle because, as you say, it's yeah. another. It is another language. It's a yeah. Um, it is yeah. We're it's speaking a, the same language, but it's written as, I don't know. Yeah. I feel sometimes I speak in the same language, but I'm not understanding the same things. Yeah, know? yeah. Uh, but no, um, yeah, I definitely, I do find processing that of brain and words, I guess. And then uh, the infamous uh, international art speak can, it's oh, finding the right language. Oh my God. Yeah, just, yeah, I don't want yeah. to sound really convoluted and... <laughs> <laughs> I I hate that. No. So, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's definitely a challenge, definitely hmm. to be worked on. So you have had um, some fantastic exhibitions the last while. One being in the RHA recently. Um, was that yeah. last? Was that last year, Jane? Yeah, it closed was, in yeah. January of this year, but it opened about no, January this year. Okay. Yeah, it opened. And that was a group show. Though. Is that right? Uh, yeah, so group show, yeah, it was. Um, so, oh god, I'm trying to. I'm after getting caught off guard now. How many are <laughs> we're in it? Sorry, and I can name them all. I'm just gonna do a quick count in my head. Six artists. Sorry. Six artists. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so but like within, I mean, because the RHA is huge, gorgeous space. Huge, like, yeah, I know. Um, that there was enough, like it wasn't hung like a group show, so it was kind of like six individual uh, exhibitions, kind of. Mm. Uh, but it was under the umbrella of uh, Futures, which um, was curated by Patrick Murphy and Ruth Carroll of the RHA. And um, yeah, they're kind of just looking at contemporary art and what's kind of current on the, the landscape. And I've done studio visits with Patrick for a number of years. Like he's such a lovely man and really actually really great for having for studio visits. They're mm. actually and they're invaluable places and times for like discussion discussion of your work and having like insights into your practice at different points. And Patrick mm. is very insightful. Um so I'd kind of had a couple of conversations with him for for years, as I say, um, or over the past number of years. And mm. I was on a residency last year in uh, Delight, which is uh, mm. in the inner city here. And they do a six month residency. Um, but it was a wonderful opportunity. And uh, he came and we, we talked about my work at that point. And, he expressed interest and I was delighted. So I was, yeah, I was really yeah. happy to go in, in, in the RHA. I mean, it's such a um, prestigious institution. So to yeah. have their yeah. backing at any point is uh, yeah. Well, great. Congratulations. Thank oh, you. Fantastic. You yeah, very yeah. Yeah. Very so what's next in the pipeline? Do you have anything? Obviously, we're in a 
yeah, lockdown. I was due to to go to uh, Ottawa in September for my first international exhibition. Wow. Um, Yeah, that was going to be exciting. (laughs) (laughs) That's not happening anymore. Um, Is that pushed out or is... Pardon? Is that got pushed out then, Jane? Like, did. will that happen? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So actually, I was I, I, I wasn't sure if it would just be cancelled outright or what would happen, but mm. the, the gallery are very, uh, very nice and uh, happy to to accommodate it. So they gave me the option of a few different dates for next year, so that will happen next September. Um. Mm. Uh, so that's the next big one that I'm kind of working towards, and. And can I ask for that, Jane? Will you go out? For, would you go out? Like, will you fly out for that and yeah. do the installation, help with the installation, yeah. or how does that work? You'll be yeah. there for the opening and the view and stuff like that. Yeah. Of, actually, it was an opportunity that I found on Visual Artists Ireland. Um, oh, wow, I just got an open call and I submitted just. Oh, wow. I always like to chance <laughs> there. Go. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> you go throw in an application because you never know. Yeah, and, um, that's brilliant. I was very lucky to secure funding from Culture Ireland, so that would allow me to ship the works over and mm. uh, help with the cost because I will go over. Um, they yeah, so I'll install the 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 exhibition and part of the request from the gallery was that I would do a talk on the opening day so they'd like me there for that so I'll, I'll do that mm-hmm. uh, happily I'll try and Brilliant. use a bit of my French <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 practicing <Yeah>. now <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so that's that's I'm really looking forward to that but this is actually a new challenge for me in like the logistics of shipping my work um, mm. I've shown I've shown work internationally before never never as much it was never a solo exhibition and it was usually a case of like wrap things up really carefully and put them in your suitcase and that won't be happening mm. this time because the sculptures yeah. just won't they won't survive that um, survive. and there's too many of them and that's too complicated and it's time to take yeah. care of my work so yes. I was really happy with the the funding opportunity from Culture Ireland to allow that to happen. Um, mm. So that's the next big thing, and uh, it's really exciting to to show internationally. I'd actually love to exhibit more in Ireland outside of Dublin. I feel like I've shown in Dublin a lot, mm. and it would be great to. Mm. I might look at that in the future to mm. get out to more rural galleries and uh, yeah. So I think there's just so much, there's so many opportunities in Ireland and I think there's such a rich culture of, of visual arts here. Um, mm. And I think living in Dublin, sometimes you get stuck in that little Dublin bubble. Um, mm. Whereas I made several trips last year to, I don't know, like visual or, and you're just like, oh, get out of Dublin, Jane, get out more yeah. because there's so much exciting stuff happening outside. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'd like to get more involved in in that community or mm. outside of Dublin more. So next year it's Canada and rural Ireland are the places. That, that hopefully, are. hopefully yeah. rural Ireland. I'll, I'll, Ireland, I'll work on that. <laughs> but there um, are some fantastic galleries around, aren't there? Like outside maybe. of you know, outside of yeah, outside of Dublin, and yeah. I mean, obviously internationally as well. Which is how exciting for you, though, Jane. That's brilliant. That's you know. Yeah. 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 yeah um that's brilliant yeah so 2020 might have been a bit of a write-off but it's nice to have it is nice to have something in the calendar to look forward to yeah 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 definitely definitely. well listen thanks a million for coming on thanks for chatting and um, just one final thing where can people find you so if they want to see more of your work and find out a bit more about you where can you point them yeah, so my website is janefogarty.com and my Instagram handle is at jane.fogarty. Um, okay. So Thanks. you can, yeah, I mean, I'm a bit sporadic with social media. There's definitely maybe more on my website, but you can find me at either of those places. And if anyone, everyone Brilliant. has any questions, just drop me an email. There's contact stuff on my, on my website. 
All right. You'll Thank be you, flooded Paul. now, Jane. You'll be flooded. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> yeah, yeah, it was <laughs> yeah. That's brilliant. It was really nice. Yeah, well, thanks. It's really a lovely chat, Jane. I loved hearing yeah. about your process and you know, kind of how you work. And um, yeah, thanks for just just being open about you know y- your day to days as an artist and stuff like that. And no, um, it's been really insightful. So thanks a million, thanks and so I much. wish you all the best with thanks. um. Okay, keep in touch. Well, the rest of the. But I'm 2021 as well with <laughs> the expert. Well. All right. So bye now. All right. Take care. Bye. See you. See you.